Welcome to Mucon's hardware. Lately we can see that the prices for Xeon E5 V4 CPUs are going down and down. And many of you are expecting some sort of a miracle where the next generation of the cheap Xeons will match modern core i5 and i3 CPUs in performance. Even though I have already tested E5 2680v4 and compared it to E5 2678v3 where I have demonstrated that v4 CPUs are not able to match v3 CPUs with a Turbo Boost Unlock, even if we have more v4 cores, people are still texting me and asking to test modern or available v4 CPUs. Some of you insist that the proper bias settings and high-performance Windows profile may drastically increase performance of these V4 CPUs. Even though it is not true, I have decided to buy myself E5 2640 V4 and compare it to E5 2666 V3. If it turns out that this CPU delivers somehow acceptable level of performance, I will match it with this Mini ITX Chinese X99 motherboard for a Mini X99 build. Otherwise, I will have to figure out something else. Before I go into the test results, let's quickly look at the technical specification of E5 2640v4 compared to E5 2666v3. Both of the CPUs come with the 10 cores and hyper threading. Both of the CPUs support DDR4-2133, but E5-2666v3 can also work with the DDR3 memory. Here it's important to mention that many E5-V4 CPUs support DDR4-2400, but unfortunately E5-2640v4 is still limited to DDR4-2133. Base frequency of these CPUs are 2.9 and 2.4 GHz, maximum turbo frequency is 3.5 3.4 GHz. So E5 2666v3 has slight frequency advantage. Level 3 cache is identical 25 megabytes. DDP is rather different though. E5 2666v3 is rated at 135 watt and E5 2640v4 is rated at 90 watt DDP. So, as you can see, technically these two CPUs are very similar, but with V3 we can implement Turbo Boost Unlock, while E5 2640v4 is limited to BCLK or base clock overclocking, and this is not possible with the Chinese X99 motherboards. The tech spec comparison that you currently see on your screen I made using a website called listium.com. If you like this comparison, then the link will be available in the video description. In this list I have gathered multiple different Xeon E5 CPUs and I add benchmark numbers when I test different CPUs. Now let's go for the test results. To test both of these Xeon CPUs I used my Huanong G X99 TF motherboard, 32 gigs of Samsung DDR4 2133 ECC registered memory, AMD Radeon RX 6800 XD graphics card, and then I have the same for both of the CPUs, Noctua and HD15 cooler, EVJ Supernova 750p2 power supply, Windows 11 operating system. With E5 2666v3 I have also implemented Turbo Boost Unlock and reduced voltage by 50-50 mV. With E5 2640v4 it is not possible to implement Turbo Boost Unlock, but it is still possible to reduce the voltage, so the voltage was also decreased by 50-50 mV. Starting with the typical Cinebench R23 and Geekbench 5 results, we can see that the single-core performance of E5 2640v4 is slightly better than the single-core performance of E5 2666v3, even though 2666v3 has maximum turbo 3.5 GHz and E5 2640 is limited to 3.4 GHz. In Cinebench R23, these CPUs score 828 points and 855 points. In Geekbench 5 we have 904 and 909 points. But the picture is not so happy for E5 2640v4 when we start to use all CPU cores. In Cinebench E5 2666v3 scores 9729 points. E5 2640v4 is only able to deliver 8291 points. With Geekbench 5 we have very similar situation, 8700 points for E5 2666 and only 7200 points for E5 2640v4. In Blender we once again see that E5 2640v4 is not able to match E5 2666v3. No matter which scene I test, Monster, Junk Shop or Classroom, E5 2666v3 is ahead of E5 2640v4 and the difference is noticeable. 
Overall, these results are rather sad, but expected. Now let's take a look at the gaming performance, where E5 2640v4 might be able to recover because of its slightly better single-core performance. Starting with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we immediately see that even though the single-core performance of E5 2640v4 is slightly better, the CPU is not able to maintain maximum turbo frequency even under gaming conditions. In this game, E5 2666 is able to deliver 86 and 137 FPS, while E5 2640v4 is only able to give us 75 and 134 FPS. The gap between these two CPUs is not that big, but the frequency of 2.6-2.8 GHz of E5 2640v4 is rather alarming. Far Cry 6 is a single-core game, nevertheless E5 2640v4 is still not able to maintain higher clocks. The CPU clock frequency still stays around 2.6-2.8 GHz. That's why E5 2666v3 is yet again on top. And this time we have even bigger gap – 64-84 FPS compared to 52-70 FPS. Rainbow Six Extraction is another disappointment. 183 and 242 FPS with E5 2666 and 176-214 FPS with E5 2640v4. Watch Dogs Legion is another game that is able to utilize multiple CPU cores, but again E5 2666v3 with Turbo Boost Unlock is on top. 7096 FPS compared to 6486 FPS. F1 2021 doesn't change the picture, 182-254 FPS with E5 2666 and 175-239 FPS with E5 2640v4. Horizon Zero Dawn, 108-151 FPS compared to 101-131 FPS. And the last tested game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Even though the game is rather optimized to use multiple CPU cores, we still get a rather big gap between the two Xeons. 78 and 120 FPS with E5 2666v3 and only 6203 FPS with E5 2640v3. As you can see, E5 2640v4 with a clock frequency of 2.6-2.8 GHz in games is struggling to keep the minimal FPS mark above 60 FPS. Still, there is one more important subject to discuss, and this is power consumption. Here I am reporting entire system power consumption and not just the CPU power consumption. So under Cinebench R23 test, system with E5 2666v3 consumes 215 watts. Under the same test, system with E5 2640v4 consumes only 123 watts. As you can see, the power consumption difference is rather huge. Even though E5 2640v4 has lower score, the performance per watt is still much better. With E5 2666v3 we get about 45 points per watt, and with E5 2640v4 we get 67 points per watt. When gaming, it's usually the graphics card who is the most power hungry, but in this case we still have a rather big gap. The system with E5 2666v3 under Assassin's Creed Valhalla test consumes 385 watts. The system with E5 2640v4 consumes only 315 watts. And again, even though the performance of E5 2640v4 was slightly lower than uh, that with E5 2666v3, the efficiency with the v4 CPU is better. E5 2666v3 delivers only 0.36 FPS per consumed watt of electricity, and E5 2640v4 improves this value to 0.43 FPS per watt of electricity. As you can see, we didn't get any miracle. E5 2640v3 with almost identical specification compared to E5 2666v3 cannot match it to when it comes to the performance. And it is all because E5 2666v3 can be turbo boost unlocked, but E5 2640v4 cannot be turbo boost unlocked. In my case, for this motherboard, for this build, I will probably search for some other CPU because I believe that E5 2640v4 does not provide sufficient level of performance, especially in games. Finally, I would like to add that I have also tested disabling hyperthreading. Unfortunately, it doesn't help at all. The CPU is still keeping its frequency somewhere between 2.6 and 2.8 GHz. 
Thus, the gaming performance is almost unchanged. In the games that are using many CPU cores, the performance is slightly lower. In the games that are using only a few CPU cores, the performance is slightly higher. But in any case, E5 2640v4 is not able to catch up with E5 2666v3 with Turbo Boost Unlock. Finally, it's you who is gonna decide if you want to buy this Xeon E5 V4 CPUs. But in my opinion, if you're building a budget gaming computer, then Xeon E5 V4 CPUs are totally pointless. It is cheaper and better to buy the V3 CPUs that have this unique feature or this unique hack with the Turbo Boost Unlock. The only option where I could recommend Xeon E5 V4 is for a low power server, when you're building a server and where the power consumption is very important. In all other cases, I would recommend to go with a V3 CPU because of the Turbo Boost Unlock hack and because of the price tag. With this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, and bye for now!